In my previous video, I did the first part of uh, this problem. So you can go to this link and you can see the first part. So let's read the question again. Find the value of k. Find the value of k for which the roots of the equation, this is the equation. Uh, I did this in the first part. So we're going to look at this at, uh, b and c now. Okay, so find the value of k for this equation uh, such that it has real and distinct roots. So the key word is real and distinct roots. So real and distinct roots. Now, when do you have real and distinct roots? If you have watched my previous video, I talked about the nature of roots. Uh, real and distinct roots imply your determinant which is b squared minus 4ac is going to be greater than zero okay okay so <clears throat> b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero when it is equal roots b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero for distinct and real roots your determinant has to be greater than zero so let's write that let's identify what is a so your a you're looking at the quadratic equation is four your b is the coefficient of x, which is minus k minus 2, and your c is 9. So as roots are real and distinct, let's put this back in this equation. So I'll go minus k minus 2, the whole squared, minus 4 times a, which is 4 times 9, is greater than 0. Now, this is negative anything. This is a negative squared, so this will become positive. So this is k minus 2, the whole squared, minus 16 times 9 is 144, is greater than 0. So let's, let's expand this out. So this is k squared minus 4k plus 4 minus 144 is greater than 0. So this is k squared minus 4k minus 140 is greater than 0. Now this is again a quadratic equation in terms of k. Now if you graph this, from this <coughs> quadratic equation I can say your y-intercept is going to be negative 140. So this is again not drawn to scale. So yeah, if you watched my previous video, I did this, but yeah, so by looking at this, if you set k equal to 0, this is going to be minus 140. That's how I know your y-intercept is going to be minus 140. Now, if you factorize this, if you factorize this, this implies uh, the two factors of minus 140, which gives you 4. Negative 4 is k minus 14 times k plus 10 is greater than zero okay so by if you set this equal to zero uh, your x intercepts are going to be plus 14 and minus 10 so this is minus 10 this is minus 10 and this is 14 so basically you can say when k is minus 10 or k is 14 your parabola this equation is going to be equal to zero Okay, so let me write that. So this implies when k is equal to negative 10 or k is equal to 14, this equation k squared minus 4k minus 140 is going to be equal to 0. And that's when you have only one root. When k is, this is what I explained in this video. You can go to this link and see the explanation. Now we our focus is, when would this parabola or when this when would this quadratic equation be greater than zero so greater than zero is for this part of the graph so let me shade this so that we're talking about this part of the graph so if for this part of the graph this is when your parabola or the value of your function is going to be greater than zero so here looking just looking at the graph i can say this implies when k 
when k is less than negative 10 this is when k is less than negative 10 or k is greater than 14 uh, your k squared minus 4k minus 140 is going to be greater than 0 so if you take any value which is less than minus 10 or uh, any for any value of k which is less than minus 10 or greater than 14 this is going to be greater than 0 so let's take an example so let's take an example so let's take what happens if k is minus k is equal to minus 11 and minus 11 is minus 11 is less than minus 10 so let's put this back in this equation so this is minus 11 squared minus 4 times minus 11 minus 140 what will happen so this is 121 plus 44 minus 140 so this is how much 160 165 minus 140 is greater than 0 so if k is less than minus 10 it's going to be greater than 0 what happens if k is uh, let me take a different example so, so the second example is what happens if k is equal to it has to be greater than 14 so let's take it's 15 so this will become uh, this equation will become 15 squared which is 225 minus minus 4 times 15 which is 60 minus 140 so 225 so let us use a calculator uh, okay so let's menu run to menu run 225 minus 60 minus 140 is that greater than 0 yes it is so here you can see it's greater than 0 so it will have perfect square okay so they will have two roots so let's check this by putting this back in this equation okay so if say if k is minus 11 what will happen to this equation so let's again use a calculator to do it graphically you'll have two roots so go to graph you're going to take you're going to put k as minus 11 so i'm going to just type in 4x squared minus i'll put minus 11 minus 2 is minus 13x plus 9 and see you've got two roots okay now what happens if k is greater than 14 that means k has to be so let's take any value of k which is less uh, greater than 14 okay so let's take 15 so this will become 4 x squared minus this is 15 minus 2 which is 13 x plus 9 it is intersecting the x-axis at two points that means two different two, you've got two distinct and real roots okay so what happens if it is any value between minus 11 what was it now it's between minus 10 and so let's take say zero let's take or let's take 10 if it is 10 which is between minus 10 and 14 you'll have you'll have will not have two distinct roots so let's exit and delete and so this is 4 x squared minus uh, 10 minus 2 which is 8 x 8 x uh, plus 9 and see what happens so you have you have let me show you uh, let me make the standard and see what happens so here you got this is a parabola and it's not intersecting the x-axis at any point so this means there are no real roots okay and finally for non-real roots when do you have non-real and complex roots this means 
no real roots. This in simple language means no real roots. So you'll have no real roots when, so complex, uh, what does it say? Non-real and complex roots, non-real, this is option C, non-real and complex roots. Okay, complex roots. You do have complex roots. This, in real, in other words, it means no real roots. No real roots. When your b squared minus 4ac, when b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Okay, and when, it, which area would correspond for on, a, on this parabola? This would correspond to this part of the graph. So let me use a red color. So this part of the graph, if k is between minus 10 and 14, you'll have no real roots. That means this implies k has to be greater than minus 10. k has to be greater than minus 10 and less than 14. If k, if you, you can experiment this. If you have a graphic calculator, you can do without a graphic calculator. Put any value of k between minus 10 and 14, and you will have no real roots. Your parabola would look like this. If you draw a sketch of it, it will be a parabola, something like this, or here, anything. Here it can also be upside down. No, it cannot be upside down because your leading coefficient is 4. Okay, so let's take one more example. To illustrate this so let's take a value between minus 10 and 14 so let's take 13 okay so uh, this is let me delete it so it is 4 x squared minus 13 minus 2 13 minus 2 okay hold on let me see the equation so k minus 2 so we're taking k as 13 so 13 minus 2 is 11 x plus 9 here you got a parabola which is not having any real roots. This parabola is not intersecting the x-axis at any point. And that's what it means not to have real roots or complex roots. When you learn complex numbers, this does have roots which are complex numbers.